We're on lesson two of chapter one, which is properties of numbers. First, we're going to identify properties of addition and multiplication. Then we're going to use properties to simplify expressions. Then we're going to use the distributive property to multiply mentally. As we go today, we're going to learn about four different properties. And there's two purposes to learning these properties. One, it makes mental math a lot easier. And two, it helps you when you get to algebra concepts. The first property for us to learn is the commutative property. What the commutative property tells us is that if you're adding or multiplying, you can add in any order or you can multiply in any order. You can see that 3 plus 8 gives you the same answer as 8 plus 3, or 5 times 7 gives you the same answer as 7 times 5. And these butterflies over here kind of show that. You could have two rows of four butterflies, 2 times 4 gives you 8, or you could have four rows of two butterflies, four times two, which also gives you eight butterflies. Another property for us to learn, which also involves addition and multiplication, is the associative property. And I underline the part of the word that looks like associate, because that's what this property involves, associating numbers with others. If you notice here, I have four plus five plus one, and we see that the four and five are grouped together. Here I have 4 plus 5 plus 1, where the 5 and the 1 are grouped together. And that's going to give you the same answer. You could try it out. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 1 is 10. 4 plus 5 plus 1, which is 6, equals 10 as well. And that also works for multiplying. If you group the 9 and the 2 and multiply that times the 6, that gives you the same answer as grouping the 2 and the 6 and multiplying it times the 9. So whenever you see these numbers being grouped differently, that's usually a sign it's associative property. We're going to teach you identity property and save distributive property for later. Identity property is just establishing the identity of a number. We have 4 plus 0 is still going to be 4. When you multiply any number times 1, it's going to give you that number. So identity property is always adding 0 to a number or multiplying times 1. And all that does, just like looking in a mirror, it shows the identity of a number. So let's see if we can solve these problems. It says, tell which property is being represented. Here we have 2 plus 7 and 8 in a group. Then we have 2 plus 7 in a group plus 8. If you remember back to last slide, that would be associative property, where numbers are grouped into different groups and then added together. So that would be associative. This next one we have 25 times 1 equals 25. If you remember back to identity property, that's simply adding 0 or multiplying times 1 to give you the same number. And that's what it looks like over here. So identity property. This one we have variables, x and y. And whenever you see two letters or variables next to each other like this, that means they're being multiplied to each other. So we have x times y equaling y times x. So if you notice, we did x first here and then y first over here. All we did was change the order around, and if you want to check back, that would be commutative property. We switched the order of the multiplication. So we'll say commutative. So now we're actually going to be using these properties. Like I said before, these properties help you with mental math. So if we have this problem here, 12 plus 19 plus 18, it's a little more difficult to do 12 plus 19 in my head than 12 plus 18. I know that 12 plus 18 equals 30. So using commutative property where I can change the order, I could do 12 plus 18 plus 19. I move the 18 up here. And that's okay. Remember, we're going to get the same answer. 12 plus 18 is 30. That was really easy. Plus 19, which gives me an answer of 49. It's easier than trying to do 12 plus 19, then trying to figure out 18 from there. It gives us a nice round number when we do 12 plus 18. It works the same thing for this. 25 times 13 times 4. 25 times 13 is a little tricky, but I do know what 25 times 4 is. So I could do 25 times 4 times 13. 25 times 4 is 100. Then we have 100 times 13. And actually you can do that too. Anything times 100, you just add two zeros to the other number. So 1,300. So there we use commutative property again. We switched the 4 and the 13 around, and we did 25 times 4 first. 
Now let's go back and relearn distributive property. Distributive property tells us that we can distribute the number on the outside of the parentheses. So if we have 9 plus 14 in the parentheses and 6 is on the outside being multiplied by this total, we could do the 6 times the 9 by itself, put the plus sign over here, and do 6 times the 14 by itself. You can get your two answers and add them together, and it'll give you the same answer as multiplying 6 times 23. It's the same thing over here with the parentheses. We have 8 times 5 minus 2. You could do 5 minus 2, which gives you 3. 8 times 3 is 24. Or you can multiply them separate. You could do 8 times 5, move that subtraction symbol over here, and then do 8 times 2. And then you would do 8 times 5, which is 40, minus 16. That gives you 24, too. Like I said before, this is often going to help us with mental math, and especially as you get to algebra. So let's try this out. Use a distributive property to find 7 times 29. I don't know about you, but 7 times 29 is not the easiest to figure out in your head. But I do know 7 times 20 or 7 times 30. So a way I could solve this would be 7 times 20 plus 9. Or I could also solve it this way, 7 times 30 minus 1. So now with this method, I could multiply 1 at a time. 7 times 20, and this is a plus sign, so plus 7 times 9. 7 times 20 is 140. 7 times 9 is 63. Adding those together gives me 203. This one could even be easier. 7 times 30 is 210. Drop that subtraction sign down. 7 times 1 is 7. 210 minus 7 is 203. So you can either have something that adds up to 29 in the middle here, or you can have something that subtracts to 29. Either way works. Let's try it with this one. Use the distributive property to find 18 times 9. So 18 times 9 might not be too easy, but anything times 10 is easy. So we could do 18 times 10 minus 1. 18 times 10 is 180. Drop that minus down. 18 times 1 would be 18. 180 minus 18 is 162, and that would be the answer for that.